Chief Tom Ikimi, a papal knight of St. Gregory the Great, as awarded by Pope John Paul II, first carved a niche for himself in the Nigerian political firmament when, as a leader in the National Union of Nigerian Students in the 1970s, he moved the motion at the Nuns Convention in Zaria that led to the readmittance of the Eastern Union into Nuns after the Nigerian Civil War. His days as a student union leader prepared him for the huge roles he would play later in life. This is the eight-decade story of a man who has traversed the political landscape of Nigeria. He is a titan of no mean repute, a quintessential leader, and indeed, a charismatic politician. give to you, ladies and gentlemen, a friend of the developing world, a man who has always championed the cause of black people anywhere. I give to you a world citizen, one of the great sons of Africa. I give to you His Excellency, the Honorable Chief Tom Ikima, Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. I'd like to thank, first of all, Mr. Chairman for his very worthy attempt at presenting my credentials. He is warm, boisterous, a robust intellectual, a smooth-talking and a highly persuasive diplomat. Ironically, Life for the man who holds the traditional titles of Ine of Igwebe and the Oduma of Esa Land did not happen by chance. After the, the war, the Second World War, when Germany was defeated, their possessions or their colonies in West Africa were shared between France and Great Britain. In the Cameroons, Cameroons was split into two parts. East Cameroon was given to France and Southern Cameroons to Britain. And uh, at that time, Southern Cameroons was part of Nigeria and their parliament was in Enugu. But in 1954, Dr. E.M.L. Ndele, who represented Southern Cameroons in that parliament, moved that you know, Southern Cameroons should have its own region. But in 1961, there was a plebiscite, and that plebiscite was to decide whether Southern Cameroons would be independent by remaining in Nigeria or joining East Cameroon. They decided to join East Cameroon. And so from that time on, I became a foreigner in the Cameroons. Tommy Kimi was born on April 10, 1944, in Kumba, Southern British Cameroon, to John Onele Kimi, a disciplinarian, and Victoria Isamoa, a consummate housewife with a pious disposition, both from Igwebe in Edo State, South South Nigeria. He attended St. Joseph's College, Sasabuya, Southern Cameroons from 1957 to 1961. As it then was, St. Joseph's College was the nation's most prestigious college, established in the mold of the British public schools run by Mill Hill Catholic Reverend Fathers. At college, he was a member of the Boy Scouts, the college band, and an outstanding athlete. We went to school together, we in secondary school. And um, he, he was the Boy Scout and um, a very good athlete. He was good in the triple jump and um, also in the long jump. His parents were in, in in Kumba, I think, where the, uh, but we were in Buya, in the capital. I had difficulties with my further studies because I became a foreigner in the Cameroons. However, I returned to Nigeria and spent some years working in the Ministry of Works in Benin before I went to be a foundation student in uh, the uh, Midwest Polytechnic in Auchi, where I studied civil engineering. 
I moved on to Amadou Bele University's area, where I studied architecture for five years. Again, that year coincided with the commencement of the National Youth Service Corps, and I served in Ibadan in Western Nigeria. And that was the beginning of my journey into personal life. His company, Tommy Kimi Design Company, was known for its professionalism and commitment to hard work, which earned it numerous contracts, one of which is the famous UBA head office building in Marina, Lagos. The company also bid stiff international competition and won a contract to design the Organization of African Unity, now African Union Office and Conference Center in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. I was already military governor by the time he, he graduated from ABU. Um, he, he came and did some work with us. He was with the Ibru Van Richards group of architects. Yeah. They had quite a number of jobs from the uh, Rivers State at the time. Um, they, so they made a lot of lovely designs, very far-reaching designs, you know, very creative. Tom Ikemi's foray into politics was by providence, and it became manifest in 1988 when he received his political baptism. He was made a member of the Constituent Assembly. This was at the time the military government of General Ibrahim Babangida was engaged in political re-engineering. So I attended the Constituent Assembly, where I made great friends. In fact, I was in the same committee of chapter two of the Constitution, with people like Michael Ibru, with uh, people like uh, Clement Ebry, and so on and so forth. Uh, all of us daughter, we were in the same committee, so fundamental principles and of, of state policy. And at the end of that year, after the, after the, after the Constitutional Conference, we started forming associations hoping to make, convert them into political parties. And that was the beginning of the political struggle. Shortly afterwards, the green light flashed, signaling a return to national politics with the doors thrown wide open. Tommy Kimi aligned with like minds with the foundation already laid at the Constituent Assembly to form the National Republican Convention, NRC, and later became the pioneer national chairman of the party. Is firmly committed to a joint partnership between elected officials and the vast array of the distinguished membership of our party in evolving a strong and united leadership for our people. Tommy Kimi, uh, a great man, came into the ring for the first time politically, bright, you know, uh, very, very confident, bold, courageous, uh, relatively young man at the time, um, but of course, much older than me. Um, but he was the specially chosen one by the elders of the party. People like my father, Chief Remif Remif Anikayode, uh, Alaji uh, Kuso, the former Minister of Agriculture, all the key, Adamuchi Roma, uh, Marafa, my leader, Al Alaji Umaru Shinkabe, they, they all decided to support him at that convention. Of course, Chief Emmanuel Umayao, uh, who was very active at the time. In fact, he was chairman of the old NNC uh, before NRC was created. So that's how he came on the scene. And he had a riveting uh, uh, um, uh, election against uh, uh, the late Alaji Ibrahim Mansu, another good friend of mine. He's died now. Good friend of mine. And um, they went toe-to-toe -to -toe at that convention. It was an extraordinary thing. When he was the national chairman of the party, he asked them who is the strongest candidate in Kano that we can, we have hope that he can win election. They told him it's me. And he called me to ask me, Aga, how are you doing in Kano? How is, we know SDP is strong in Kano uh, and you are a young man. Because that time I was just about 37 years old. And he said, ah, can you make it? I said, well, with the God's grace, I have confidence that I can win election in Kano under the platform of his party, NRC. And he said, well, be it, we'll support you. Chief Ikimi is someone that has this air of uh, gravitas that, you know, 
uh, commands respect. The moment you see him, you just know that you have to respect him. And as chairman of our party, we all respected him. I mean, to the extent that we all, we, we as governors will all be gathered and once he got in, we all stand up. I don't know what is going on today, but at that time, the chairman of the, chairman of the parties were highly regarded and respected. And that respect got across every area. If he was visiting the state, we all had to be at the airport and he really deserved it. During our recent campaign tour of the 21 states of Nigeria, we were overwhelmed by the massive support of Nigerians and their total acceptance of the National Republican Convention as a party that is better positioned to solve the problems of today's Nigeria. With utmost efficiency and deft deployment of political craftsmanship, Chief Tommy Kimi quickly transformed NRC into a formidable political party with enviable national spread and structures. Within a two-year period, he achieved creditable electoral victories. Governor Clement David Avery of Cross River State and uh, Mrs. Veronica Avery. Your Excellencies, Governor Mohammed Dabo Lere of Kaduna State, Governor Oboraya Olu of Abia State, Governor Obong Apani Seven of Akwaibon State. That period was when we had 30 states in this country. And um, the first election of the Babangida transition, uh, which the two parties contested, the SDP had 14 states. The NRC, which he chaired, won 16 states. So we had more governors than the other party, 16 versus uh, 14. He was a great leader. He reigned as the chairman and was very strong, very strong character and a disciplinarian. When I became governor, um, I found him one of the most effective party chairmen that uh, I have uh, worked with. Because Tom was, um, he was, as I said, brilliant. And he had a vision of what he thought the party should play in Nigerian politics. Uh, he did not just want to create governors. He wanted to mentor the governors that the party created. When Ever Governor as a chairman, national chairman wanted to visit us in Kano. We don't just send somebody to the airport to receive you. I as a governor goes to the airport with my people and my entourage to receive him, wait for him until he lands, and we drive through the the Kano uh, city down to Gamma House with him in a large crowd and a lot of people come out on by the roadside to receive us because he was a very popular Chairman. If we came here, we will tell you that both parties must meet in the wards, meet in the local government, meet in the states, and the caucuses of the party must meet and send back reports to him. So this is what the political party is all about. And the party have the sledgehammer to discipline any member. Tommy Kimi has that courage that uh, you will think he's the president of Nigeria, but he wasn't the president. But that attracted me to who he is, soft-spoken, intelligent and respectful. He commands the aura that many other party chairmen that existed then never commanded. From the time we got to NRC, in, that is in 91, I mean, 1991 and till up to now, I have not seen a political party come up with such innovations. Do you know, in NRC, we had what they call Republican Electoral Agency. That agency, right, and the, all these ones, the two, National Working Committee and all that, was the one that organized elections. And he got people properly trained. A man gifted with an intense sporting spirit, Tommy Kimi never saw elections as a do-or-die affair. 
Despite the fierce contest this party posed to the opposition, he maintained a cordial personal and political relationship with leaders of the Social Democratic Party, SDP, including the late MKO Abiola. We had governments installed in the 30 states of Nigeria, that is, that is governors and houses of assembly. We had, a, we had a national assembly installed and we had a senate installed. We had different strengths in all these governments, the SDP and the NRC. During this period of almost four years and two and a half years of elections, Abiola was not party to any of the two political parties. I met Abiola myself and pleaded with him to join our party. And he said to me emphatically that his family had prevailed on him not to join any political party at this time. For the record, the 1993 presidential election annulment by the military did not occur under Tommy Kimi's stewardship as national chairman of the NRC. As we went on and prepared for the presidential election, uh, there was some misunderstanding between the two parties and the president and the presidency of Babangida, which led to the dissolution of the two parties, uh, the le leadership of the two parties. And so in tw uh, when the presidential election came up, the election which Abiola won, the general feeling by many of us was that if we, if Tommy Kimi was still the chairman of the NRC, the NRC probably would have done better, probably would have even won the election. Tommy Kimi was named a member of the committee that formulated the principles for the establishment of the interim national government, which was headed by a technocrat, Chief Ernest Olade in Deshuneko, between August 26 and November 17, 1993. Chief Tommy Kimi's years of building political bridges and friendships across ethnic lines were rewarded when General Sani Abacha, then Nigeria's head of state, recognized this quality and tapped into his uncommon wisdom. That was during the military interregnum, which vacated the less than 90 day Shuneko led interim national government. He was made special advisor. A special advisor to the head of state, General Sania Bacha, in February 1994, Tommy Kimi prepared the memo to establish the Petroleum Trust Fund, PTF. That Chief Tommy Kimi is courageous is beyond doubt. His courage can be verified by the candid manner in which he once drew the attention of his principal, General Sania Bacha, to the lopsided execution of PTF projects in a region of the country by General Muhammad Buhari, as it then was. Give me to General Bacha to his face. Your Excellency, this PTF is one-sided. It's doing more project in one part of the country, as if the other part of the country doesn't matter. So if the PTF sees itself in the manner it seems to see itself as a regional uh, development agency, then it should be scrapped. I'm like, who is this man who can talk to uh, head of state Abacha? So bold, so frank, with other generals there. And of course, what makes it interesting to me is the fact that the, the part of the country he accused of benefiting more, whether he was right or wrong is a different matter, but those were his views, is where Abacha come from the very man that made the minister, and who can decide tomorrow to drop him. So that courage to speak in the manner he did to General Basha, yeah, I said I'd admire him for that. I like, I, I like courageous people. In March 1995, Tom Ikimi was appointed Minister of Foreign Affairs at a time when Nigeria was referred to as a pariah nation. His tenure coincided with a period when the West African subregion, and indeed much of Africa, was plagued with conflicts, including civil wars in Angola, Rwanda, Burundi, Zaire, 
the Sudan, Liberia, Somalia, and Sierra Leone. He instantly became the de facto crusader of Africa to the rest of the world. That, um, for the time being, that Nigeria would cease to participate in Commonwealth activities and that the uh, Commonwealth Fund for Technical Cooperation will cease to operate in Nigeria and uh, Nigeria will not be entitled to attend uh, ministerial meetings of the Commonwealth. The decision by Chogam on Nigeria was not based on any official hearing from Nigeria, but rather from media reports conveyed that morning. Would stand as selective, discriminatory, and grossly unfair. I would be the last to tell the world that we have perfect systems in our country and that we do not have problems of social, political, and economic nature. I was then the Chief of Defense Staff. Due to the situation we, a bunch of uh, government found itself, we were suspended from many world uh, bodies. The one that in particular that gave him trouble some was our suspension from the Commonwealth. And if you remember, during that period, there were some rumblings in, uh, in the Niger Delta where some people were killed and uh, naturally the Abacha government at that particular time uh, tried uh, those uh, people and those who were found guilty were executed. That proved a very difficult period for uh, Tom Ikimi because he was uh, attending the Commonwealth Conference at that time. And of course, because of the execution of these people, Ken Seri was, uh, was one of them. It brought uh, quite a big problem for Nigeria. And he, as the foreign minister, was carrying most of that problem. As Nigeria's foreign minister, Ikimi led the country's battle for peace in the West African sub-region, effectively contributing to the successes recorded by the West African peacekeeping force, ECOMOC, in Liberia and Sierra Leone. So how do you see things now? Fantastic. Why did we not implement Konate? You are the Liu Kamara? Yes, sir. Oh, I say I heard you on BBC this morning. Thank you very much. Sir. Do you know me? I know you very well, sir. Oh, what's my name? <laughs> Chief. <laughs> Ikimi, in a classic display of diplomatic sagacity, achieved feats difficult to be matched by many foreign affairs ministers. For instance, not many people are aware that it was to his credit, hard work and deft negotiation that coup plotters in Sierra Leone, who had seized power and sacked President Ahmed Tejan Kaba in May 1997, agreed not only to relinquish power, but reinstated President Kaba after one year. That experience remains one of such times Nigeria, as Africa's leading nation, successfully negotiated with armed military coup plotters to relinquish power. To the rule of the executive people of Sierra Leone, we are reliable, dependable, ardent, democratically elected president, president Alhani Ahmad Tijan Kawa, to you all for the peace and peace of the progress and of the Republic of Sierra Leone. Thank you very much. He was also the first diplomat to courageously carry out an on-the-spot assessment 
of the situation in Sierra Leone after the liberation of Freetown. Over the past nine months, we have done our level best to ensure that the world was not let down and that Africa was not disgraced. I would like to, on behalf of the chairman of ECOWAS, convey publicly the commendations of the chairman to the gallant men of ECOMOG through the force commander, Major General Timothy Shalpidi, and especially to the commander of the forces in Sierra Leone, Colonel Maxwell Kobe, for the excellent job that they have done so far. Tom Ikimi found himself playing the role of Minister of Defense. This is why he was involved in this uh, peacekeeping operations. Before the Sierra Leone success, it is on record that Chief Tom Ikimi was Nigeria's first foreign affairs minister to set foot on Liberia's soil while the country was still in turmoil and in crisis. He led the diplomatic negotiations that led to the first post-war elections in Liberia. The result was the assumption of office by Charles Taylor as a democratically elected president of Liberia, ending the long reign of armed conflict and guerrilla warfare in that country. The United Nations also appointed him as its eye at the July 19, 1997 elections in Liberia. He played a prominent part in the peacekeeping operations uh, we were doing in Liberia and Sierra Leone. And he made quite a number of trips to this country. Tom Ikemi undertook missions as the special envoy of the head of state to several countries. He met with the heads of states and governments of the countries concerned. He also visited New York several times as an envoy to deliver messages to the United Nations Secretary General. He led Nigeria's delegation to several United Nations General Assembly meetings and the non-aligned movement NAM meetings and officially delivered Nigeria's messages. Nigeria believes that for a number of reasons, there can be no better time than now to pause and reflect critically on the commitment and obligations which we, the parties to the Non-Proliferation Treaty, made a quarter of a century ago. First, this review and extension conference on the NPT is taking place at a time when the present administration in Nigeria is engaged in a great national effort to lay a solid foundation to ennoble our huge and diverse population to live in harmony under an enduring democratic order and benefit from sustainable development. When he was a Minister of Foreign Affairs, we went to China. At this delegation, after our suspension from uh, Commonwealth, and you know, he was speaking. Instead of saying General Abacha, he said Babangina, and all his enemies gang up to say that he must be removed from the Minister of Foreign Affairs. And I went to Abacha, I said, Mr. President, nobody that I know can do what Tom Ikimi has been doing for Nigeria. All those people that are gang game, I say, you make a mistake as well. You are talking. It's not like he deliberately demeaned you to call Babangida and agreed with me that Tom should not leave. Tom Ikimi led Nigeria's delegation to the 50th commemorative session of the United Nations between September and December 1995, and officially received His Holiness Pope John Paul II 
at the United Nations. Most inspiring is that during his tenure, Nigeria retained her membership and leadership of the central organ of the OAU Mechanism for the Prevention, Management and Resolution of Conflicts, which was specially created to coordinate conflict-resolving efforts on the continent. Tom Ikimi formulated the principle that guided Nigeria's decision to turn to China for trade opportunities. This has proven to be one of the nation's enduring visions for shared prosperity for both countries. Democracy must have a home. Democracy in Nigeria belongs to Nigeria. We do not aspire to have a democracy in Nigeria, even in Africa, which will be the same as that in Uganda, which is a one-party system, or in Cameroon, where there was only one candidate for the presidency, or in Cairo, in Egypt, where over three, year, three, three tenures running now, that always been one candidate. We want a democracy that is typically Nigerian, but those who are against Nigeria are not against Nigeria because of the emerging situation. They're against Nigeria for other reasons, because they would not like to see a developing country, a black country, black country, arise. He was able to still keep Nigeria before the world. He was able to, to make our case. It was a difficult thing for him to sell at the time because most Nigerians were not happy with, um, with Abacha, but he had a duty. The year 1998 marked a time of active return to domestic politics. The time was ripe, the stage was set, old alliances came together, and new political parties began to emerge. I decided to join the, A the APP, All People's Party. But unfortunately, there was a major development when a large chunk of the party broke away to form the AD, the, the, the Southwest, and that weakened the party substantially. If that had not happened, the APP was the party to watch at the time. Opportunities opened for Chief Tommy Kimi to move to another platform. Pressure mounted on him to join the People's Democratic Party. He succumbed to the persuasion of some prominent PDP stalwarts. In recognition of his pedigree as an unbiased leader, he was appointed chairman of the PDP Electoral Committee, which conducted the party's presidential primaries for the 2003 elections. The passenger, and the passenger, the passenger, and the passenger, the passenger, and the passenger. End of box 34, box 35, please. The organization of that convention was faultless. No person could fault it. The arrangement, the organization, and everything just because uh, Chief Ikimi was involved. Unfortunately, the man whose name he chorused at the PDP presidential primaries was the reason for his exit from the party a few years later. It became clear that former President Obasanjo persecuted those opposed to his third term ambition, and that included Chief Tom Ikimi. After the Obasanjo, Obasanjo, Obasanjo uh, episode of that convention. He felt some people still were trying to undermine uh, his uh, uh, participation in politics, particularly having joined the PDP. So he decided to stay behind the background and allow things to unfold. And of course, in the course of all of that, again, Obasanjo also did not forget the role of 
of uh, Chief Tommy Kiwi as foreign minister. That was uh, at the time when he too was arrested. So it continued that way. And Chief Kiwi and a good number of us decided, no, you know something, enough is enough. Now, Obasanjo went further to deregister some of us who were members of the PDP, including His Excellency Atiku Abubakar, GCON, Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, was deregistered. When they discovered that they had difficulties in the PDP, not so sure as to the change of power. That's why I was able to work with Ayo Okpadokun here in Abuja to form the Action Congress, AC. Ikimi was the undisputed leader. So let me put it on record that uh, Chief Ikimi supported Adam Sushimole at a time when a lot of his people were clamoring for an Isan governor. And if you know Chivikimi, you know too that he's a very proud, patriotic Isa man. He's a man who works on convention, who works on principles. And uh, as far as he was concerned, uh, it was his res responsibility to ensure that the party we had just betted in the do should start on a good footing by having a governor. And it didn't really matter where that governor came from. And as a governor, he was still the leader of the party. Uh, one thing that day I found a bit strange because uh, uh, everybody wants to become governor, they say the governor is the leader of the party. But in Edo State and in the ACN, we did it only that way. The leader of the party is always different from the governor because it, the party is the mother, the governor is the baby. And the baby, the baby cannot lead the mother. However, this is a theory. Uh, the governor will have all his influence to do whatever he wants to do, but for whatever it is what, the, the formal leadership of the party in the state is not the same thing as the governor. So I submitted to his authority as the leader of the party in the state. But the good thing is um, we had debates and they were called leadership meeting you know, across the three senatorial zone, and they will invite me with him presiding at his residence, and he will say, if I can imitate the way he talks, well, Mr. Governor, these are the leaders of the party, and uh, we just want to know, we heard over the radio, or the newspapers, you want to do tax, you want to reform taxation, and so on. And uh, you need to brief us, what is it all about? And how will it affect the popularity or the rating of the party? Anyway, I'm entitled to know. If I don't know about it, I can't defend it. And I will stand up and explain. Time was ticking. And with it came a fresh realization to register another political platform. We, the following progressive political parties, namely, ACN, ANPP, APGA, and CPC have received, resolved to merge forthwith and to become the All Progressives Congress, APC. Chief Ikimi played a major role and it was a very tough session. Uh, politicians from different backgrounds coming together and agreeing to drop their identities, drop their exalted position, and they become members of a new political party. It was an experiment that had actually never happened before. I know severally the attempts to bring about uh, an alternative political party has failed several times. The mega party, a lot of people have come together, they made the attempt, it has failed. And so what I witnessed during that period was that he, he focused on the deal. Despite the fact that the majority of the people around him, 
never believed that this is, was going to work. And at the end of the day, the things that people have deemed to be impossible materialize in front of us. At so many occasions, people wanted the merger to stop because um, some party believed that their logo are not carrying on their sample. And, uh, but Tom was firm that the only way that will bring democracy to stay is to have a strong party that has the followership of the North, South, East, and the Southwest together. And today, look at how APC become. And but unfortunately, he's not enjoy, he's not getting the benefits of the his, his his level. But he really he fought for it. He fought very hard. I do remember. He went into his studio. I hope you know that Chief Tommy Kimi is an architect, an architect of note. He made a few, he made very many designs of what he thought should be the logo. And that is how he came up with the broom. In fact, I saw that logo first in his studio with a man holding the broom at a point. Uh, he chaired the, the process, and uh, as I said, the, the rest is history. However, the area I disagree with him was when he decided to leave the party. This is a house you have to form, to build. In the case of Redo, maybe I move into the master bedroom as a governor, but I don't own the house. I don't own the party. And I think you, you should have satisfaction from the fact that you lead a party in the state that is in power. And uh, hard as I tried, he had made up his mind he was leaving. On deep reflection, High Chief Tommy Kimi, CON, the Akinrogun of the source, is undoubtedly taking stock and reflecting on the landmarks and milestones in his adventure-filled life. When I returned to Nigeria, I went to Igwebe, my own hometown. I'm happy that I was able to hand over to them a new local government, Igwebe, Igwebe. At least they respect me there. That's where I come from. So everyone should do the best he can for his own people. The Gwebel local government did not fall from the skies. It was the, the creation of Chief Tommy Kimi. He, it was, when he created that local government, he just named it after the city called Igwebe. And so we have today Igwebe, Igwebe. Chief Kimi is one of the people you will describe as a multi-talented personality. Um, I had the benefit of meeting and working closely with him when I came into politics and he since then has provided leadership. Ikimi was really remarkable. He feared nothing, he feared nobody. Uh, he was very, very forceful once he took a position. Uh, he was very, very uh, slow uh, to anger, but irresistible in battle. And uh, a man, the old school, he learned from the old school politicians, which is why the elders loved him so much. He was a young man compared to them, but he seemed to have imbued their own spirit of honor, decency, uh, sticking to your word, uh, 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 and fighting the enemy with everything that you've got and also reaching out to make new friends, which are, which are qualities that we don't often see today anymore. Uh, this is what he carried into the NRC. He carried it later on into other political associations, the PDP and so on and so forth. And that's how he remains until today. And I think we need to celebrate people like that whilst they're still alive. In his assessment of Nigeria's current political development, the Papal Knight of St. Gregory the Great 
and the Oduma of Issa land is optimistic about the country's future. Well, Nigeria is a great country. We have everything that needs to make a country great. We have the resources, we have the people, and there is hope for the country. But we must ensure that we have the right system working. Yes, it is true. Military rule is no longer, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the way to go. It's no longer fashionable. But you can see coups happening all around us now. We don't need a coup anymore in Nigeria. We don't need also, the, we don't need also the civil, civilians to rise here. It's important that the government in power should make sure that the structures that make for democracy work. Highly respected among his peers, High Chief Tommy Kimi does not shy away from speaking the truth to demonstrate his patriotic zeal. He is now regarded as a political sage. I never knew I was going to meet him until one day I was in the university when a company that I used to consult for and it called my attention to the fact that they needed me in Abuja urgently for something. And the next thing I was boarding a flight and I, I saw, uh, I didn't know it was chief, but someone who was in bowler hats and he was sitting in first class and the, uh, of the plane and I was asked to go and sit down somewhere with the security man. And that was it. I was wondering, what, is this how... I'm going to be arrested, is this how I'm going to be incarcerated, you know, probably for my days, my actions during student unionism then. But I never knew what was going on until we got to uh, Abuja and I came into the house and then we started conversing. And one of the first things that he said was, Mr. Uh, young man, Mr. Shegun, is that your name? I said, yes, sir. He said, so you are the genius they've been talking about. And that was the beginning of a new class and new education for me. I'm not trying to praise him. He's a very straightforward man. You can know where he stands at all times. Even when he was national chairman of our party, NRC, the National Republican Convention, you can know where the man stands. He doesn't pretend. There's no pretense in Chief Kimi's mind. He will tell you the way he feels and call the bluff. And you can know where he stands. And that is what we need in people. The man who would rather say, I'd rather down my feet than live on my knees. You rather eat mushroom in freedom than meat in slavery, or rather be the widow of a hero than the, the wife of a coward. That, 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 that's exactly uh, uh, Tommy Kimi for you. There was a move to impeach President Obasanjo, and Gali was the speaker, and the notice of impeachment, because following the constitutional provision, you need one third of the members to give the notice of impeachment, and that had been issued. That was when um, I Chief Tommy Kimi and I got close because he became a rallying point on that matter to ensure that we were statesmanly, we were, that positions were taken not on pre model uh, basis and sentiments. He is a golfer, and uh, he has very beautiful cats he uses it for his uh, golfing. Any golfer, I stand to be challenged, any golfer at his age and level is worth every respect that is earned, is not given. Our special assistant to Ada George, then governor of River State. And he was national chairman of NRC, our political party. So I took some drinks to meet him. At the time, um, um, Remy Martins. It was one Remy Martins VSOP and one Remy Martins XO. So I took to him, and then when I when I I presented the drinks to him, he smiled and said, "Dr. Sakibo, do you know what VSOP stands for?" 
I said, no, sir. And he said, and you're drinking, you're, you drink this. You don't know what VSO stands for. I was started laughing. And he said, you see, VSOP stands for very special open. <laughs> and it was, it was so interesting. And he said, XO stands for extra old. The way he said it, you know, is stuck in my, in my brain. And, you know, Chief Tommy Kimi was a man, has only been a man of class. There was a day we all went to the national headquarters of our party to see Chief Tommy Kimi with our governorship candidate, Chief uh, Rufus Hada George, then before he became the governor. I think Dr. Dilly was there, if I'm not mistaken. It was tough to have access. And uh, eventually when we met the national chairman, then High Chief Tommy Kimi, he said, what are you looking for? We said we are from River State and this is our aspirant, <laughs> governorship aspirant. <laughs> he said, look, <laughs> gentlemen, um, uh, Chief Ada George, you can be my governor. <laughs> That's Chief Tommy Kimi <laughs> for you. Um, Chief Kimi is one person who's always been there for us, uh, for me. Um, he, as you can, you may not know, he's a very, very organized and detailed uh, politician and very strategic in terms of how he thinks and how he plans. Um, so I was fortunate to work with him um, while I was campaigning and he, he was quite uh, meticulous and deliberate in how he saw the political landscape and coming up with plans and strategies to assist. Um, I'll always be grateful to him for his support. Well, uh, Chief Tomikimi and I, who have been a uh, political soulmate for many years, starting from the days of uh, the National Republican uh, Party, um, way back in 1992, 93, 94, and then, of course, uh, in 1999, he was in uh, AMPP, while I was in um, uh, PDP, and then after a while we came back together again into PDP. He's an architect of politics. He's somebody that um, works hard, well organized, eloquent, and a mobilizer of people. So I believe in his capacity to mobilize people, to drop agendas, to formulate policies and create direction for a political party that enhance better uh, democratic norms. Now, one thing one can say of Chief Tommy Kimi is his consistency. And I always say this to my friends. I have many, 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 many good friends. But I can say probably the most organized, most organized and most focused of them all is Chief Tommy Kimi. When unfortunately General Abacha passed away uh, and destiny brought me into the leadership of this country, was very, Tommy Kimi was very, very helpful in the early stages when I took over the governance of this country. He did a lot to make sure that I settled down gradually, and he did a lot to introduce me to the foreign ministers whom he was dealing uh, with over, world over. And uh, indeed, I'm very grateful to Tommy Kimi for the role he has played in my stewardship.